Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of our four-part tutorial series on setting up your own stylized anime character in Cartoon Animator. In part one, we covered how to properly import and set up the sprite and bone positions for body and face via the PSD template dummy. And here we're going to add hair and accessories and learn how to set them up for best results. Let's start with the hair images first. I'll start by dragging the hair parts that will go behind the actual face down to the RL Image Head V2 group, and since they will go behind all of the head elements, move them below all the other groups. There are a lot of moving parts here, so for clarity's sake I'm going to color code them to red, meaning we need to add some additional bones later. You can see that she has a ton of front hair groups, which we naturally want to place in front of the other facial features. We also have background elements for a collar and sneakers, which we need to bring to the back. Combining these with other frontal elements helps to simulate a three-dimensional appearance, so I'm placing these in front of the other body part groups. Okay, now we need to set up the bone position markers. To add additional bones, simply place images with the same name into their corresponding bone folders. Then return to CTA to connect and refine the positioning. Here you can see our ponytail bone markers connected to the main head bone so they can follow along with head movement but still rotate independently. For the next part, I'm going to copy all of the red marked images for the body and then use paste in place when pasting them into the RL Bone Human V2 group so they will maintain the same position. The reason for this is that each image placed in this group will generate its own bone when we update in Cartoon Animator. Since we don't need the actual images themselves and only their placement, we can hide the copies in the RL Bone Human V2 group. I'll repeat the process for the hair and other groups, only this time pasting them into the RL Bone Head V2 group, then we can go ahead and save to update in Cartoon Animator. You can see here that additional bones have been created, each according to the name of the image or group we pasted into their respective bone folders. Now we need to refine the position of these bones, as you can see by the rotation result here. To do so, enter into the bone editor and click and drag the marker to the correct position and then preview. Now, in order for these bones to follow along with the upper body, we need to connect them to the upper torso bone. You'll see an additional bone appear once the connection is successful, and you can preview the results. Since most strings don't remain stiff like that, we can add some additional bones for more flexibility. With the parent bone selected, click on Add Bone, then click down the length of the string to add as many as you need. Now we can have the string sway back and forth, which we'll look at in a bit. Okay, let's move on to the collar accessory next. Here we have three bones, one for the back element and two others for the front. Since these will move along with our character's neck, I want to connect them all to the neck bone. However, the preview result stretches the other layers and looks weird, so we need to take two additional steps. The first is to add some additional bones for the front of the collar so that it can move more flexibly. 
In order to keep the side section stationary though, we need to add some pins to each corner. After we do this, you can see that the area is now pinned down while the front of the collar still has some flexibility. I'll repeat the process for the other side of the collar. The shoes are basically the same as the collar. Simply connect the rear and front element bones to the main foot bone. In this case, we don't have any other layer stretching, so we won't bother with any pins. Now for the fun part, the hair, which as you can see is a bit more complex. Let's start off with the ears. As you can see, the marker for our outer ear bone needs to be repositioned correctly for proper rotation, as well as the ear fur one. We can then connect these in a hierarchy to the main ear rotation bone we set in the first tutorial to ensure that they all move together when the ear moves. Do this for the other ear too, and then go ahead and preview. Now don't be intimidated by all the bone markers on the front of the hair here. You can select them one by one and preview to see which sprite is assigned to which bone. In a case like this, you'll probably want to utilize the Isolate Selection feature, which hides everything that isn't selected in the Layer Manager. You can find it in the toolbar, or use the Ctrl H hotkey to toggle it on and off. Essentially, you just want to go through all of the hair images one by one and refine the bone position for proper rotation from the hair root. Once again, you can preview to check the result. For connection hierarchy in this case, we have some hair shadow elements that we need to connect to their main hair elements. We need to connect the individual strand to the main front hair bone, which will ensure they all move in unison with the head. After that, we can rotate the head and see everything move together. That's great, but obviously we want to add a bit more dynamism to the hair, so let's look at how to assign spring bones. I'll start with this one bang element here, and add some bones down its length. If you can recall with the hoodie string earlier, this allows it to bend. Then, with the parent bone selected, open up the spring editor, select the first child bone, and with include child bone selected, click on assign to group. You can choose any of the presets here, then preview the parent bone rotation to see the cascading spring result. Repeat this process for all of the other hair strands. You may also want to add in additional pins at the very top of each hair strand to ensure that there is no unnecessary distortion or misplacement in that section of each hair strand. Finally, repeat the same process for the character's long pigtails. Refine the position of the parent bones, and then add a string of child bones down the length of the pigtails.
This character also has a rear hair bone that we need to connect to the main back hair bone that was included in the main body dummy template. Since the pigtails are on the back of the head, we'll connect them to it as well. Naturally, we also need to assign our pigtail bones to the same spring group in the spring editor as well. You can adjust the bounciness and speed parameters to determine how dynamic and quick the spring effect is. Here you can see the result on all of the different strands of hair in front of the face. And finally, on the hoodie strings and collar. Depending on your specific character, you may need to rearrange the layers slightly by clicking and dragging them in the layer manager. Normally, characters won't have rear hair elements this long, but in this case, you can see that they are clipping on the top of her arms. So in this case, I can simply drag those pigtail layers in front of or behind the arms depending on preference. When you're done, go ahead and test out some motions. This is the best way to see if you need any further tweaking. That's it for this tutorial guys, thanks so much for watching, and hopefully this helps you on your character creation journey. Be sure to check out parts 3 and 4 for more details on facial expression and simulating 360 degree head movement. I'll see you in the next one.